Hello, beloved family. So, uh, I, I haven't been on in a while. Um, the attacks are horrendous. Uh, intensified and daily, as I'm sure that most of you are, are going through the same thing. So, um, we know we have to be close. So, uh, as a watchman, um, myself and other watchmen, of course, usually look at the feast days because they are always a high watch date. And, um, there's, and it, there is something in all of them that point to a possible departure. However, um, Shavuot is, um, I don't want to say, uh, bigger or more important than the others, but, there's just something about it, and I'm going to show you some things that tie into it, which are pretty interesting. So, um, I happened upon this website uh, because I was looking up different places where I, I could find information, because I've studied it before in recent years and gotten information from certain websites. So, we wanted to look at a different one, and um, this one has some pretty good stuff on it and it's just interesting because up here is the letter Sheen so Sister Darla if you're watching um, you know that that's important for you and um, it this this page here here's the the address if I remember I will link it um, has some really good information and some neat pictures like this is a Torah cover, it's really pretty. And then it goes on to talk about how on Shavuot, um, in the synagogue they read the book of Ruth because she is gleaning during the wheat harvest season, which is when Shavuot falls, or Pentecost. And um, of course the book of Ruth is about the Gentile bride who marries the kinsman redeemer. So we know that that definitely ties to us. And it talks about um, how Shavuot is symbolic or tied to the wedding to our bridegroom, um, to the father, firstly, because it was at Shavuot that Moses went up onto Mount Sinai to receive the Torah. And this is where the glory of the Lord came down from heaven onto the top of the mount. For those of you who have seen uh, a documentary about Mount Sinai and where the true Mount Sinai is, which the Bible actually tells you where it is, that it's on the Arabian Peninsula, and it's not in Egypt. Um, what is believed to be the true Mount Sinai, the top of it is black, like it had been burned. Um, and it's the surrounding mountains are not like that. So um, it's very interesting, but it represents the time when um, the glory of the Lord, the Father, or Yeshua in the form of the Father, came down, not of course in human form, but in his glory, and presented a ketubah, or a marriage contract, to the Israelites, asking them if they will do all that he says. And before they even knew what it was, they agreed and said, yes, we will do whatever he says. They tell Moses that they will do whatever he says. And this is before they knew what the instructions were, because they agreed to it. Then Moses went back up the mount to receive the Torah, and then he had to bring it back down. So um, it was basically them marrying God. So the children of Israel were the first uh, bride 
to God the Father, and then, of course, the bride for the bridegroom, Yeshua, the Son, will be the first fruits of the wheat harvest, which is what is offered up at Shavuot. And in recent studies in the past, in my understanding at the time, I thought that the bride would be representative of the barley harvest, and then those that were ready afterwards would be the wheat. Now I understand that the first fruits of the barley harvest was Yeshua. He was the first fruits of the dead that were resurrected during the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is the barley harvest. So Yeshua is the barley. The wheat is the two loaves of un I'm sorry, of leavened bread. Leaven meaning the corrupting factor because we in our human flesh are corrupt. And the two loaves representing Jew and Gentile, which will become will be offered up as one, the one new man. Because there is no Jew or Gentile, no Greek or or Jew, they are one and the same. If you are a believer in the one true God, the Most High. So, at Shabbat, those two leavened loaves of wheat bread are offered up as first fruits. And I watched our sister Kim Mosley's video today, which was very encouraging. Thank you, Kim, if you're watching this. And she mentioned a brother, um, Steve, um, sorry, I couldn't remember his name, Steve Monette, um, who he, his, his findings are a lot like mine. Um, basically, I have the same disclaimer as he that I am not prophesying that the rapture will happen on any certain date. I'm just showing you what scripture says and then applying it to a calendar doesn't mean that anything will happen on that certain day. I'm not saying that that, as a rap, that, that will be the day of the rapture, the day I'm going to point to. Um, but it is a possibility. Any day is a possibility. Because calendars are all messed up, and we don't know for sure. Um, so I'm not claiming that the rapture will happen on any certain day. Just showing you what scripture says, and then plopping it onto a calendar, because those days do fall on a calendar. So, that's why we look at a date. So, if the the day or dates that I'm going to show you come and go, I'm, I am claiming right now that I never said that that was a day of the rapture. It's just a watch date. So, anyway, um, he brought up something that I had already been studying before I watched Sister Kim's video. And it was about the dead in Christ. And I, the Holy Spirit connected me to the three hog feasts. Hog, meaning uh, the three pilgrim feasts um, of Passover slash Unleavened Bread, Shavuot, and Feast of Tabernacles. And how he, Brother Steve, pointed out that each of those three feasts are a raising of first fruits or of the dead who are in Christ. Of course, like I said, Yeshua was the first fruits of the barley. Uh, as First uh, Thessalonians chapter 4, in verse 17, those of us who are alive and remain will be caught up to meet the dead in Christ in the air. That, in my understanding, and in our brother Steve Monette's understanding, that particular verse should pertain to Shavuot, or Pentecost. And, and I'm not talking about any specific date on a calendar, but the actual feast. So, and then of course Feast of Tabernacles would be the last resurrection of the dead which will be those who come to Christ during the tribulation, but die during the tribulation. They won't be raised until their glorified body, until it will be Feast of Tabernacles time frame. So, um, so he confirmed what I was already being shown by the Holy Spirit when I was studying, and then I was reminded of a dream that I had about my aunt that I have done videos about, and a dream that my mom had about her. 
my mom's sister. And the dream that I had, she uh, she she passed away several years ago. She had cancer, and of course, because she had cancer, she received chemotherapy and lost her hair. So in the dream, when I first saw her, I was walking down a hallway, which to me would represent um, a portal. And she had some hair, but she had lost most of it in the dream. So this was before she received her glorified body, but she was excited. She was passing me, and she said she had to go get her coffee, which means she was being woken, awoken, um, raised. She was being raised from the dead. Then, right after I passed her, I entered into a room at the end of the hallway, and it, it was light in there. It was, it was, you know, bright light and two of her other sisters were in that room and her other two sisters were named Roberta and Mary. Now Roberta's name is the female version of Robert and the name Robert means fame or glory. So and then Mary, huh, Mary, her, her sister Mary could have been in there because Mary was the first one to see Yeshua in his glorified body. So it was like I saw her before she was transformed and then when I went into the room that symbolized she had now been transformed into her glorified body. I didn't see her get transformed but going into the room with her two sisters and their names and I asked them if they saw her, and I think they said no. I don't remember. But then the scene changed, and I left that room that was lit up. You know, there was sunlight in the room. Not man-made light, but sunlight coming into the room. I left that room, and I was immediately outside. And it was dark. It was nighttime. There was a tent in the backyard, so it was Feast of Tabernacles. So... There's a connection there between the dead in Christ rising at a Shavuot because, ah, oh, I just realized something. <laughs> the two loaves could also represent the dead in Christ, those who have died, and those of us who remain alive. That's the two loaves could also represent them. Um, so I think the dream was repre representing that it, it, the time of Shavuot where the dead in Christ rise, receive their glorified body, and then it was tying to Feast of Tabernacles, which would be the last time of the dead in Christ. I think he was trying to show me a connection between those two feasts and the fact that they are the ones that will involve humans rising. The first one, of course, uh, was Yeshua rising. So, um, so I thought that was interesting, and then something else that ties my aunt that I just told you about, and Shavuot is my mom had a dream where she came to her, because those, them two, my mom has four sisters, um, well, she has three now, but her and the, and the aunt that I just spoke of that passed away were very close, that they were, and she had a dream that my aunt, came to her and said, let's go learn Torah. And then she, my mom says she, they went, they were in, in like a classroom situation where there were stones in a circle and they were all sitting on the stones to learn Torah. Now my grandmother, their, their mom, she was a believer loved the Lord, she taught Sunday school, and so, of course, you know, the kids were brought up in the Word, but as far as them using the word Torah, they wouldn't have used that word, because, um, you know, my mom's family comes from the Midwest, and um, uh, they just wouldn't have used that word. So, there's another tie to my aunt, who... I had a dream about her raising from the dead, and my mom had a dream about her saying, let's go learn Torah. Well, the children of Israel didn't learn Torah until 
after he came down on the mount, on Mount Sinai. And when he came down, the scene of him coming down in Exodus is exactly what we'll, we will experience when he comes in the clouds. And, except for he won't touch the earth. And here's a confirmation to that. So I was looking up and studying Shavu, and I came across the, you know, the Torah portions and the Haftarah portions that they read on Shavuot, and I knew that they read the book of Ruth, and there's some other scripture. And one of the things they read is Ezekiel chapter 1, and I was like, I don't remember seeing that. I was like, why do they read Ezekiel chapter 1? And several months ago, the Holy Spirit was telling me to read the book of Ezekiel, and it was probably when I did a video not too long ago about my aunt, and, um, of course, Ezekiel 37 talks about the Valley of Dry Bones, where, and, and it has several, you know, connection meanings, like it could be representing the nation of Israel being reborn, um, but it could also represent the dead in Christ, because they were bones in a valley, and of course, <laughs> and us being dry bones, because... We're in the Valley of Decision right now. We're in the Kidron Valley. We're in the Valley of the Shadow of Death. While we await our Bridegroom to come. And so, of course, Ezekiel 37 could represent the dry bones coming back to life. Him renewing our strength, bringing us back to life while we're in the valley. But it could also represent the dead in Christ rising because Ezekiel prophesied and flesh came upon the bones and a great army was made. So I had already read that part, so I didn't, I just kind of skipped around. And <laughs> I didn't realize that Ezekiel 1 is about his vision that he had where he saw the Lord come in the clouds. So let's look at that. Okay, so it says, Now it came to pass in the thirtieth year, in the fourth month, and the fifth day of the month. Remember that, because I'm going to show you something that I could not believe when I saw. Fourth month, fifth day. And I was come, I was among the captives by the river of Chebar, that the heavens were opened, and I saw visions of God. So the heavens were opened, which is what will happen when he calls us up. In the fifth day of the month, it was the fifth year of King uh, Jehoiakim's captivity. So there, this is when the house of Israel is in captivity. The word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel the priest. Okay, so he sees, and he, he goes on to describe, I looked and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud and a fire enfolding itself and a brightness was about it and out of the mist thereof as the color of amber out of the mist of the fire i also had a dream where uh there was fire in the sky and i knew it was time to go actually two dreams uh also out of the mist thereof came the likeness of four living creatures so this is where he sees the chariot so he sees the lord in the heavens, the sky is opened up. He sees him in, in the heavens on his chariot. And this is where he goes on to describe, you know, Ezekiel's wheels, the wheels. So, this is him having, he is experiencing, seeing, and he's not, it's not just a vision, he's actually experiencing it. Because, not only was he, seeing uh, the vision, but he was hearing the noise of their wings and the noise of great waters. Sorry, my voice is crackly. And the voice of the Almighty. So he was hearing and seeing and probably feeling the wind too as the, you know, the wings were, were flapping. So it was really more than a vision. He was actually there in spirit. He was 
like John was when he was taken to heaven. He was there in spirit. So I had no idea that they read this. So I found a site. Uh, it's myjewishlearning.com. Why we read Ezekiel on Shavuot. So the tradition connects the prophet's vision of Ezekiel to the revelation at Sinai. So then it goes on to say um, there's a connection made between the prophecy and revelation. Um, Ezekiel's vision is taken to be a collective vision at Mount Sinai where every Jew was able to see God's presence. This implies that every Jew was a prophet and could become as great as Ezekiel. This, what, as soon as I read that I was like, what? Because some of the other verses that they read in the Brit Hadasha or the New Testament, of course, if there are Messianic synagogue, are here, and this is why. Because John chapter 1, verses 32 through 34, this is where John the Baptist sees the Holy Spirit come down as a dove and land on Yeshua after he baptizes him. And then, of course, we know that as soon as he was baptized, he went into the wilderness for the 40 days and 40 nights of his time of testing his quote-unquote tribulation. So it says he saw the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove. So he sees the glory of God in the form of the Holy Spirit as a dove comes down and lands on Yeshua. This is exactly in, in a... Um, comparative way, a connection to the glory of God coming down onto Mount Sinai. And there were witnesses. So the connection that I'm thinking is that, well, we, of course we know, if the rapture should happen at the time of Shavuot, as soon as the bride's gone, tribulation, immediately. The time of tribulation, the, the great tribulation will begin. Now, the 40 days and 40 nights, I don't know, you know, of course we know that the Great Tribulation will be 1260 days, but it, there's a connection between when the Holy Spirit comes down, which is what happened at Pentecost, which is Shavuot, in Acts, which is down here, The day of Pentecost arrived, and they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind. Now, any time you read in Revelation, the book of Revelation, uh, when, when the glory of the Lord enters this atmosphere, there is thunderings and lightnings, uh, a whirlwind, which is the rushing wind, uh, and the sound of many waters. So, the Holy Spirit comes down and lands on the people. Well, in order for us to receive our glorified body so that we can leave here because we're not leaving in this flesh, the Holy Spirit has to come down and change us like he did Yeshua's body when he was in the tomb. So, the Holy Spirit fire will burn away the flesh and our glorified state we will rise up. Now, whether that will be in the form of a body or just, you know, light, I don't know. But, of course, we know that the Holy Spirit, God's Spirit, the glory of God coming down and changing us is what's going to be when the rapture happens. So, I want to point to some other stuff. I'm kind of out of it right now. I don't know if you guys can tell. <laughs> I have been literally, it's 11.23 right now, and I have been studying all day trying to put things together literally all day since early this morning so i just wanted to get the video started because i do have to work for a little while tomorrow and on monday and tuesday so um because shavuot on the jewish calendar is coming up a week from tomorrow sunday the second I wanted to get this going so uh, let me cut this off here and I will pick it back up tomorrow before I go work and I'll have my thoughts together a little more clearly so I love you guys hang in there we're almost there 
wait till you see what I'm going to show you on my calendars. That specific date that I just read in Ezekiel chapter 1, uh, the fifth day of the fourth month, it coincides with Shavuot on the Jewish calendar. And I'll show you that when I come back for part two. So come back and I will talk to you all then. I love you. Hang in there. Shalom.